The FDA's Vaccine Advisory Committee is meeting today to discuss a proposal to simplify the COVID-19 vaccination schedule. They will consider an annual COVID shot for most adults and children similar to how flu vaccines are currently given. The FDA will also ask its panel to vote on whether all vaccines should target the same strains. Let's bring in CBS News medical contributor Dr. David Agus to talk about this and more. He'll also answer some of your medical questions. Uh, so, Dr. Agus, first off, what is your take on this possible shift in vaccine strategy? But unfortunately, I think it's necessary. You know, data came out this week that the new bivalent booster reduces symptomatic infection by close to 50 percent in many people, and at the same time, 80 to 90 percent serious illness. That's dramatic benefit from it, and only 16 percent of the country has gotten it. So, getting a regular cadence now every fall, you get your flu shot and your COVID booster makes sense because I think there's been a lot of misinformation, disinformation, and lack of understanding around this booster, which I do think is very important. Um, so uh, another headline, the FDA is also proposing new limits on the amount of lead in certain baby foods. And I think a lot of people probably heard that and they thought, why is there any acceptable amount I, of lead? As expectant parents, we, we looked at that headline, yeah. Emery and Dr. Agus, and we were like, wait, but there's a they lot allow of, lead in baby yeah, food? But there are a lot of sort of heavy metals that we're probably not even aware of the fact that we're consuming. But can you sort of explain this to us, doctor? Yeah, so heavy metals, you know, are in the soil. When you burn coal, it has heavy metals in it, it goes to the atmosphere and it rains to the soil. Some of the insecticides have heavy metals and other types of farming yield heavy metals in the soil. And so when they looked at baby food over the last several years, almost all of them had levels of these in them. Many of them had levels that could affect the brain development of the child. And so you're right, it is crazy that we're allowing this at all. The levels that the FDA is proposing, it's great that they're proposing something because there were no rules before, but I do think they certainly need to be stricter. We need to figure out where we can do this farming, what are the best ways of doing it, and not all foods are the same. Rice has very high level, for example, bananas very low level, so we need to get them information out to parents. Mm. Well, knowing how quickly our federal government moves, I'm sure my kid will be in high school by the time uh, <laughs> they come around to uh, getting the acceptable levels of lead. Uh, as the rule of law. Um, let's take some questions from the public now. The first comes from someone who's on the fence about getting the latest COVID booster. They say data shows it's not as effective as originally believed. What's your advice there? Yeah, I, you know, I think that the data has been confusing. What they showed is that antibody levels gave less protection in an assay in a laboratory. But when you look at the real data, Again, you know, people to 50 years old, 50% reduction in even getting symptomatic with the virus. This is the new strain, XBB.1.5, when exposed. And dramatic reduction in serious illness and hospitalization in people who are high risk. So I do think the data are there. I think that the data that have been out in the media many times have been misinterpreted. And I do think you should get it if you have not had COVID in the last six months or you haven't had a booster in the last six months. You should probably get the new booster. So this person wants to know if they should get their five and two and a half year old boys the COVID booster. Um, so if their boys has not had COVID in the last year, so younger kids I think are a little bit more resilient or has not had a booster in the last year, yes, I would get that booster. But if they've had COVID, you know, a couple of months ago at school, they probably don't need the booster at the present time. All right, uh, Dr. Hayes, this comes from someone who has watched your series on Paramount Plus. It's called The Checkup with Dr. David Agus. I encourage everybody to check it out. Uh, they say that on an episode with Oprah and Maria Shriver, you talked about how menopause can cause a woman's brain to shrink. And she said she's not a candidate for hormone replacement therapy, and she wants to know what other options there might be for her. You know, it's interesting. I'm getting this question a lot because a lot of women are not candidates for hormone replacement after they've gone through menopause. And the data are clear is that, you know, estrogen is very important for the brain to function. But what we do know is that there are other ways to keep that brain engaged, activated, so you don't lose cognitive function when estrogen goes down. And I know it's going to sound weird, but the key is to get uncomfortable. Do activities that make you uncomfortable continue to work if you are working or find something to get your brain engaged is critical. Pattern recognition with physical activity is the best thing. Go for a walk outdoors. Actually driving fulfills that also. But really keep your brain engaged and you won't lose the cognitive function that can happen as we get older later in life. Pretty interesting. Probably good advice for everyone, I yeah. think. Uh, Dr. David Agus, thank you very much.